Do you want more? More time, more balance, more love, more sex, more money, more real, and less bullshit? This is the Women Wanting More podcast with Dr. Karen Osborne. Real life, real stories, plus real tips to get you more of what you want. So I just finished giving, sending an audio message to my good friend, Jill saying, oh my God, Jill, I cannot wait for fucking school to start. So record this. It's the day before our kids are back at school. I know a lot of you that are in the U.S. that listen um, that August you guys start, but uh, Canada, it's mostly the day after Labor Day. So yeah, structure, routine, swimming lessons are starting again. Like so looking forward to to all of that. This summer has been... um, a shit show to say the least with stuff coming up with me or was I <laughs> this is the danger of um, recording a podcast walking my dogs because then somebody has to poop of course so yeah it's just the last three months have been insane just a lot of the stuff that I'm going through with what I kind of refer to as the breakdown the breakthrough the spiritual awakening however I'm feeling on any particular day um, figuring stuff out for me, figuring out what I really want to do with women wanting more with this movement. Um, things come up with my husband, figuring out with stuff with his business and personally, and then a lot of the challenges we've had with, with the kids that I am pumped for routine. Like, get me back to boxing, get me back to my swim lessons. Um, I'm actually also going to be taking uh, hip hop dance classes. Totally pumped about that. I want to take dance classes forever. And uh, this is like a new challenge for me, but like, just get me back to routine. I want space to write. I want space to podcast. I'm recording this podcast the night before. Like, this has not been the way things have been rolling in business, but you know, so be it. So be it. I'm going to be doing more like cooking at home with and for the kids and for the family and uh, just getting back on track with a lot of things. But as I'm messaging my friend Jill, I'm like, God, how do people live where shit just is happening around them and they don't create any kind of structure? Now, you might be listening to this right now and you're going like, well, Karen, you know what it's like with me? Like, you know, I'm divorced and we have custody shared with the kids and sometimes it's, it's kind of tricky or maybe you're not getting along well with your ex. Um, maybe job stuff really changes with you. Maybe you've got like babies, right? Toddlers where they're up at night and stuff. And like, I can understand all of that. But I'm telling you, everybody can create some semblance of routine in your day. Do things go sideways sometimes? Yes. But you can still make it work, however small. Meditation can be two minutes. You know, you can make sure that each day when you get up, you make your bed. You pray. You read one page of something spiritual or, you know, meaningful to you. But a routine and structure, particularly how you start your day, is everything. It's everything. It allows you to go throughout life, even with challenges that do come up for all of us, with a lot more grace. A lot more, um, I was going to say the word comfort, but that's not really, a lot more ease. You know, so like, you know, tonight as I'm getting ready, first day back to school tomorrow, my youngest starts kindergarten. So he actually just has a half day this week and then they start full time the following Monday. But, you know, I'm getting out. I've got sitters to help with me this week, putting on the kids clothes, Tyson. There's no lunches for tomorrow. It's just because Tyson's only in the morning. So I've got like snack stuff already in his bag. It's all ready to go. Have his nap, knapsack out, his new, new backpack, has shoes out. You know, we're, we're starting the bedtime routine. Like, I know those first couple mornings, probably the first week, is going to be a little tricky for Tyson because he's been sleeping a little bit more until maybe, I don't know, 7.45, 8, 8.30. going to allow my body a little bit more sleep because I'm just seeing, like, he, he needs it. But, um, yes, routine back. Routine back. So this is going to be a short but sweet episode because, and I'm going to do some more of these, you know, like I I know some of you might appreciate the longer one, but sometimes it's just, it's a quick hit, man. There's not a whole lot to talk about routine and structure outside of you fucking need it. 
Like you gotta put that in, however that is, and you start with one thing. Don't start with 20 things, because that's way too difficult. Start with one thing, consistently do that, and then add another thing. And do those two things consistently, and then add another thing. So here's your more tip then for today. I want you to have one thing that you set up that's part of your morning routine that you commit to doing consistently every single day. Every single day. I share with you two of mine that I do like without fail. Without fail. The exception is with one of them because one of them is my dog walk. Um, If my husband's away, which we have a lot of times Red's away coming this month in September, um, then obviously I can't. And I will fit it in later in the day when the kids are at, maybe in the summer at camps or with a sitter or now I'm going to be at school. So when I get up in the morning, the two things that are done, well, obviously after I get up and I pee and put my contacts in and get changed, everything, get dressed, is I meditate. Like that is an absolute must. I even have my seven and a half year old now meditating most days. It's part of his routine. He has to earn his iPad time now. He has to earn that. So he needs to meditate for a minimum of two minutes. And it's cool because it's with Muse. So he hears the bird tweets. It's, it's a biofeedback headband, by the way, if you're not familiar with what Muse is. And uh, so he has to do that then now each day. Good God. <laughs> There's massive construction in my neighborhood right now, which you're probably hearing that little hum. Uh, yeah, craziness happening right now. So... Meditation, I do right away. I actually crawl right back into bed, do my muse meditation for 15 minutes. Then I walk downstairs and I have everything set. Leash is ready, poop bags out. I put my shoes on, I already have a hoodie on and I go outside and walk my dogs. So you pick one thing for you. I don't care what the heck it is. Could literally be that you just, maybe you sit down and you write out like what you're grateful for. I mean, there's a lot of things that I have in my morning routine. There's a lot of things I do in my evening routine to get ready for the next day. But it's not going to really help you to say, here's all the stuff that I do. I want you to choose one thing and commit to doing that for the next 30 days. Structure, routine. And by the way, if you happen to be a sister who's like, oh my God, that's so anal. Like, I'm going to be able to do what I want to do. I'm telling you, routine and structure does not take away from your life. It actually gives you freedom. It gives you space. See, when I set up, for example, my swim lessons, I now have them set up there every Tuesday at 9.30 until the end of December. Like, that's it. I'm not setting them up week to week. Same with my trainer, Rob, although we're setting up some new times right now, but it had been Wednesday nights, um, Thursday mornings, and I had a third time, but I've been injured over the last couple of months. I've been recovering, but so we were just doing two times. So it was it was that Wednesday night, seven p.m., Thursday morning it's at ten a.m. Like they're just set in space. It gives you freedom, sister, freedom. So there you go. More tip: one thing that you will add as part of your morning routine every single day. Commit to that for the next thirty days, and uh, and that's it. Routine will change your life. If you allow it and if you actually commit to it. Because see, now I can't imagine not meditating. Like, I'm not good unless I've had that time of stillness. I'm just not. I'm not good if I don't get outside into fresh air and I move my dogs. So I'm excited. And then, and then hit me up too, sister. I want to hear from you. Send me an email to drkaren at drkarenostrom.com and let me know after the 30 days how this has really impacted and affected your life. And I'd be honored to hear, hear about that and hear your story. So I will talk on the next episode, sister, A Life of More. It's just one step away from you having routine and structure in your life every single day. I love and appreciate you. To get the show notes of each Women Wanting More episode, including the how to get more tip, subscribe to the newsletter at drkarenosburn.com slash newsletter.